with TT on High 97. My special guest today, Jesse Reyes. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. First of all, your skin looks absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I love <laughs> to see a fresh face Ooh. and the skin is glowing. Thank you. Do you have like a regimen you use in the morning or is this is that that youthful Ooh. look to yourself? Um, I do some affirmations, I do some gratitude, and then I throw some cold water on my face to wake up. A little bit of concealer that I like to call fake awake just for some bags. Yeah. Because bitch been struggling to get some good sleep. <laughs> and, um, and nah, yeah. Your yeah. skin looks beautiful. Thank Whatever you. you're doing, it's working. Thank you, like, thank it's you. Just, it's just beautiful. You got a, a nice glow about yourself. You. Um, first of all, before we get into this book, I want to um, talk about your new single you just dropped with Big Sean. It is out right now. Super fire. Tell me about that collab. Oh, man. Uh, I'm so amped about it. I've, like... In the past, I struggled with being scared of success. I I struggled with it for, like, many reasons. In the past, I was, like... Just, yeah, just many things. Like, the first time I started experiencing it, 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 um... At the risk of sounding ungrateful, it took a toll on me because I experienced what it felt like to have, like a wave of people treat you one way. People that I knew, it wasn't even so much strangers, but people that I knew, and then all of a sudden, like, you see some success, and everyone's a fan, and everyone's a supporter, and everyone's been believing in you from time now when that wasn't the case. And so, unfortunately, it cultiva cultivated a little bit of um, rencor, like a little bit of resentment. Fear. Oh. Re well, yeah, well, anger, Re anger, to be honest. Yeah, anger, and, like, a chip on my shoulder, and I was lucky enough that I had my family close, and... And my parents chimed in because they saw me kind of leaning towards that negativity when such beautiful things were starting to happen. And my mom said it in a beautiful way. She was like, you can't fault people for not having believed in you until you showed and proof because that's, a, that's just a reflection of limitations that they have imposed on themselves. So if they have that imposed on themselves, how could they ever offer you grace, you know, for what you could do until you actually did it? Very eloquent, very sweet, speaking life into me. And my dad said it a very much more concisely and more poignant and a little bit harsher, but it did the trick. He was like, what the fuck do you want people to call you when you're losing? You want people to cheer for you when you're losing? That's not how life works. People see you winning, and then you're going to get calls, and then you're going to get enthusiasm yeah. and shit. And so it made me pivot in how I was embracing these blessings and actually be more cognizant as opposed to having a chip on my shoulder because yeah. it took however long and because yeah. people have switched because now I'm not... I might be a little bit reluctant to late love, but love is love regardless of when yeah. it comes. Yeah. So I'm happy for how it's being embraced. But it's also a part of the process, right? Mm -hmm. It's part of your journey. It's part of um, whatever your your divine enlightenment, whatever your divine journey is, right? Um, and telling yourself, I'm worthy of these praises. I'm worthy to be cheered on. Mm -hmm. I'm deserving of it because, hell, I'm talented and I worked hard and... This is I'm and this is for me, mm -hmm. you know, and stepping into that. But it, it can be hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But doing those things are very very beneficial. It helps train your brain into embracing your new chapter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And stepping into it. So the single, Big Sean, tell me about that. Uh it's called Shut Up. Shut it's, Up. Uh, <laughs> it's a little bit aggro, a little bit braggadocious. And I love it. <laughs> and I love that Big Sean was down for it. We shot the video. It was lit. The director Priya killed it. It's just it's been it's been lit, and I um, it's just nice to play with something that has more levity, yeah. you know. Because I know I can dance in both worlds, and as a writer, I've been able to like give that to the world things that have a bit more levity. But just I'm not the vehicle. There's been other artists that have been the vehicle for the songs that just feel a little bit lighter. So it's nice to be able to play with that sort of levity, but keep it keep it you at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Yeah. What do you like most, the writing or the actual performance and hearing? Which one brings you... Of the two? Yeah, brings you the most joy. When you can express yourself on paper or when you can express yourself live in front of people? Wow. You know what's funny? When people ask me what my favorite part of what I do is, I always list those two, but I've never had to choose between those two. Because wow. those two are like my literal favorite and they're my favorite because they're the most um, pure. And they both force you to be in the moment. Yeah. You can't create unless you're like open. For me, I can't unless I'm just open in there and then letting yeah. the energy flow, you know? And I can't perform to the best of my abilities unless I'm present and looking everyone in the eye and we're all like, you yeah. know? But of the two... It's a hard one. You know what? 
right now, the answer might be performing. Yeah. Okay. It might be performing. Because, and for selfish reasons, because the, the it's instant gratification, mm. you know? And yeah. I'd love to be a purist and say yes and, and like quote Rick Rubin from his book that's like the, the art is successful the second it gets made, yeah. which is true as a purist. But if you suspend that purity or if you're letting a business side of you coexist because we live in a capitalistic as society so it's hard not to employ those mm -hmm. those not not employ but exercise those laws sometimes that being said it just allows for instant gratification when you're live yeah because you can actually connect you could with, like, feel the you energy could feel yeah it. yeah you can still feel it when you create but it's hard to detach for me it's hard not to be a little more critical when i'm yeah. done the song and think okay cool well this could live here, this could live there. I try to keep it pure, and I do in many ways. I make sure that when I'm creating, I don't like a lot of people in the yeah. room. I make sure that it's still a sacred space. But I'd be lying to you if when I'm driving home in the car listening to the song that I made, if I'm not envisioning what it could be or where it could go or or how it's going to resonate, you know? So it's future things yeah. that I won't be able to, like, yeah. taste that day. But the performance day, when it's done right, I could taste it It's that so day. interesting. Um, I remember many years ago... Um, I was at an event, and I might have told this story before, but Ice Cube um, was performing in Miami, and I was doing the backstage interviews, and I remember him getting off stage, and he was like, how did I do? How did I do? Like, he just cared so much about how well he did. And I was like, what do you care? You're Ice Cube. You're like, you are a legend. You have movies. You're this. He was like, nothing feels more than instant gratification said that. he said that Crazy. and i was like wow now that you think about it yeah because you know your movies yeah you're shooting in the moment but you gotta wait to see yeah. how people like it right yeah. <laughs> the songs are the same way you you uh create in in that moment and then you put it out and then you wait for whatever you know reviews or whatever but he's he said the same thing he was like that instant gratification that rush to connect with his fans gives him the most joy. Yeah, it's very, it's really fucking sick because it forces you to be completely present. Yeah. You, you have to be. Yeah. You have to be. So talk about being present because it's difficult with so much distractions and so much clutter that's surrounding us, especially now. I feel like the world is in such a chaotic space with the wars that are going on and everything happening on social media. I mean, it can you can easily be distracted by all the outside noise. How do you stay present in that moment and connecting? Really, to be honest, especially like right now and today and like where we're at as a collective, I'm struggling. So I don't know what the answer is, but my steps in doing it are are I mentioned this earlier. We talked about it. We talked about it a second ago like Controlling what you can control yeah, helps a lot. Yeah. I'm and also not go. looking at a mountain and thinking that you got to dominate the mountain that day. Like step by step, things can change, you know? A process. A process. And so that helps. It helps in how you want to resolve whatever efforts you're doing to help the collective and to help push the world towards more of a place to push the world towards more of a place that has empathy as the forefront. Yeah. And peace as the forefront. And love. Yeah. Love for each other. Love, love for, for humanity. Other. Love for the earth. Love for just human kindness. Yeah. I think, like, we got so far away from that. You know, I wrote I wrote under some something I saw on Instagram, and I was like, you know, as cliche as this might sound, love is really, truly the only healing power that we have and and you know so many people attack that and I was just like wow it goes to show you how much or how far we've gone from a loving ourselves but also loving thy neighbor and I'm just mean like not you know somebody you may know but a stranger just having empathy or just feeling in that moment like I love you because God is love I am love and I feel like it's just we have gone so far away from that. It's fucked. We're in yeah. a really tense spot. But because yeah. it's fucked because sometimes, especially right now, when you want to express empathy, it's um it's fucked because we have to hold space for people that haven't gotten there yet that are holding anger. Yeah. And are and are in their right to hold anger, you know? Yeah. 
if I was experiencing certain levels of fucking violence and atrocity, I'd be holding that too. Yeah. And it would be hard to hear someone say, let love be the forefront because it's human to feel a spectrum of things. Yeah. You know? But you're right. The highest frequency, the highest version of self would be to practice forgiveness and love. But it's it's a, it's, a, it's just not an easy task yeah. sometimes, but it's beautiful to aim for. Yeah. It's not in... Um, that's why I do a lot of meditation. Me like I do a lot of like journaling and meditation and trying to stay connected with them, the spirit that's inside of me to balance all the other stuff because, you know, I don't know about you, but I feel a, a lot. lot. Girl. <laughs> Girl. I feel a lot. And I like cry at the top of a dime. Hi, twin. <laughs> What's your sign? I'm a Gemini. I'm a Leo. One of my best friends is a Gemini. So I understand. Look, that's why we're both like tearing up right now. Because like we feel, we feel for people and we feel a lot of empathy. And that's why like um, meditation and breathing techniques and constantly writing and staying, staying within, you know, um, helps balance that. Because it can, it can be a really, really hard spot to navigate yeah. through. Yeah. yeah. But that's why you make beautiful music, right? I'll try. <laughs> and you just dropped a beautiful book, Words of a Goat Princess. Mm-hmm. And I just literally opened it up. Um, and it says 25, uh, 25 Rebels. Marriage is Disney incarnate. Divorces are documentaries. Regret is buried with the dearly departed and truth and society are enemies. If you see me in a white dress, send help. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Stop right there. If you see me in a white dress, send help. I don't want to give my life away and be a wife. But in the event that the world's orbit reverses and in the event that I do marry, he will be a feminist. And if I have children... They will be rebels. And if they go to school, they will question teachers. And if any and if my children have children, they their children will be rebels too. Break that down. <laughs> <laughs> look at Leave picture. me alone if you ain't fucking with the vision, is what that means. <laughs> look, at <the> <laughs> Shit. look at the picture. Look at the little rebels in the picture. That's illustrated by a really, really, really Talented artist named Brock Tessler from France, who I've worked with for many, many years. She's amazing. She did all the illustrations for the book and the cover. So beautiful. So, in the in the short version of that. Yeah, in the short version, if you ain't fucking with the vision, leave me alone. That's what that means. If I find partnership, it needs to be someone who's aligned with that, and and the system is a liar. So I'm not here for it. <laughs> the system of marriage. The system, just institutions in general. You know, at the risk of sounding like a conspiracy nut, I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> I just, institutions be fucking lying, and a lot of people just want to make money, you know? Yeah. So that it comes down to marriage, it comes down to school, it comes down to debt for fucking tuitions, it comes down to fucking mortgages, it comes down to what the expectation of what life is supposed to be as an adult. And it's and it's a, it's just a system that I don't subscribe to. I have the privilege of not subscribing to it because I'm an artist who lives off my art. I'm very well aware of that, but I'm not going to bite my tongue because I've been able to benefit from saying no to the system. There was a, there was a, there was a photo, I, a photo, a post I saw that really resonated and it was like, if you're free, congrats, it's great that you're free, but what are you doing to free others? So in my attempt to free others from what I feel like the system wants us to become, I just try to be transparent about my feelings, even if I'm benefiting from being in the fringes of what society's norm is. Yeah, yeah. And I, and let me tell you, um, I have a son, and he asks a lot of questions. And I encourage that. Mm, like, yeah. I encourage that a lot when he says, Mom, but why? But why? I don't be like, boy, because I said so. You know, I actually engage in conversation with him because I want him to ask questions. Like, he asks me questions about it could be from the smallest little things to what's going on in the world with the wars. Like, And I encourage that. And when he's in school, I always encourage him to ask yeah. Well, why did she say that? Did you ask her why? And I think it's it's in children is the most purest form, right? And they're so curious. 
And as long as and and I, I encourage that just authenticity, authenticity when it comes to children yeah. and asking questions. It's a beautiful thing to cultivate early on. My parents did that with me too. Yeah, I was very much welcome to question even the most um, sacred topics. I was allowed to question, and then I was given space. And if anything, it was encouraged to speak to like to go to go get things directly from the horse's mouth. I remember when I was little, I was like questioning. We were learning about religion class or something, and they were breaking down Mother Mary and Immaculate Conception. And we also had science class, so at the time I couldn't. I couldn't um, rationalize the two. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck do you mean you're teaching me about penis and vagina and sperm <laughs> and you're telling me this was immaculate conception? What does that mean <laughs> when these both are true? When you're little, that doesn't resonate because you feel like you're hearing north and then south. And I was like, what the fuck? And then I talked to my parents and I was like, Don't this, doesn't it seem like Mary was a liar? And they're like, oof. <laughs> okay, let's talk about it. And we had a conversation. And uh-huh. my dad expressed, he was like, listen, he was like, Faith is something that also serves as help for people in society. And sometimes people perceive um, specifics and dissonance in the specifics as enough reason not to subscribe to a medicine that might actually help and be their North Star for morality and be their North Star for how to try to for how to cope with like regular life problems. And and he he's he finished it with saying you shouldn't fault other people for using faith as a crutch because life is hard and sometimes people need what they need. That was a heavy thing to say to a kid, but it was a beautiful thing to say. Mm-hmm. And then when I spoke to my mom, my mom was like, we should go to the church. Express your opinions to the priest so the priest can tell you his opinion. And you can. And I was like, sick, let's go. <laughs> his name's Father Efren. I love, I love, I love him. Yeah. And it's a strong thing to say from me that just literally said I don't really fuck with a lot of institutions. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I don't agree with. But him as a man and holding space for a kid that yeah. came to have that sort of conversation, especially as a man of God, could have re- rejected that. Yeah. Could have made me feel like shit for questioning the faith. Could right. have made me feel awful. Right. But he held space and had a conversation with me. And it was just a really beautiful thing to to expose a kid too early on because like like your son's going to feel in the future, it just made it a very safe space to be able to communicate. Yeah. And I think that's what it's all about, right, is learning and giving them tools to communicate. Because if we subscribe to the cancel culture or not speaking or not having conversations, how are we really evolving? None. You don't. You don't. You have to have conversations with the other side. You have to. Because your beliefs doesn't make it true. Yeah. My beliefs doesn't make it true. Yeah. So if we're not having these tough conversations, yeah. doesn't mean that I hate you or dislike you. Like, how do we solve anything if yeah. we are just shutting each other down? Yeah, it's fucked. You have to make space for, for welcome discourse. It's just the only thing. It's just... Obviously, we're speaking in a very utopian way. Yeah. Which is beautiful. It'd be beautiful <laughs> if that was it, but it just sucks because sometimes emotions get involved and then things get triggered and then respect leaves the room. And when respect leaves the room, then all of a sudden there's a war of words and no one's hearing shit. Yeah. That's when it goes to shit. But that being said, a lot of those adults that can't do that are because they weren't given the tools when they were young. Yeah. You know? Which yeah. is kind of, it's fucked, but it's also a beautiful thing to think of because then if there's parents like you and parents like mine that are cultivating that early on, then maybe the next generation will have more tools and liquidity when it comes to communicating yeah. and having difficult discourse to find solutions that benefit everyone. And it's interesting you say that because those kids who weren't given those tools now have a tool, which is called a phone or a computer, to just say whatever or bully or do whatever, cancel people, but not effectively communicating. Yeah. So it is a fucked cycle. <laughs> yeah, hopefully it's a cycle that will change. God will. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to talk more about um, this book in terms of how um, it came about. So was it just over time you wrote these beautiful poems? Or um, were they songs or things that you had? Like, tell me about Tell me more about it. Mm, poetry is actually what was my first... Um, Playground. Words were always my my first playground. The, the first accolade I ever got in my life was a medal from a poetry festival I won when I was like 11 years old. Mm, I love that. That I still have. <laughs> and it uh, the only time that I ever got a phone call from school was from my grade A teacher to call my parents to let them know that she, she... I don't know if she did it. I've said this before. I don't know if she did it consciously. But 
coming from a Latino household where we only spoke Spanish, anytime I'd get help from my parents for homework, it would be help with, like, science or help with math or help mm-hmm. with something that wasn't... Um, English, That right. was more so universal, yeah. Yeah, yeah, as opposed to a foreign language. So with English, I was on my own. And I don't know if maybe she knew that. Yeah. And she called the house and was like, hey, just to let y'all know, like, your daughter's, like, talented in this subject. Who does? <laughs> it was just so sweet. And it meant a lot. It meant a lot that she did that. I and, love uh, that. Yeah. So, th- so anyways, m- that's that's always been my first, despite how the public might perceive me as this being a new endeavor. It's always been my first playground. And I started working on it during the pandemic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised, though, because you're such a incredible writer and your music has such great arcs to it when it comes to story writing and i want to shout out angie martinez angie martinez honestly is the first person that i um found you no like, shit as an artist i yes. love angie so yes. much angie's angie advocates for you so much has always been there since day one and i remember her always posting you and and i was like well, let me let me listen to her music and i discovered you through angie martinez crazy social media. i love <laughs> angie shout out to angie man Fucking legend. so yeah she is a legend sweetest person in the world sweetest. um yeah she she really is um and so that's how i started getting into your music Music. And um, y- your your ability to just storytell and make these beautiful songs and have these beautiful story arcs. And I just feel like this book, like I could I can 100 percent tell this was your first love because of the way you write your music. Mm, but yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> So are we coming out with um, a project this year or? First quarter, God willing, next year. Next year. Okay. Loosely. I say that very loosely. Don't hold me to shit. We'll see. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see. My team's back there like, what do you mean don't hold you? (laughs) (laughs) What can we expect loosely on the project? Um, What What have you been working on that you're willing to tell? I'm just getting better. So same truth, same shit, talking about my life, but just better, in my opinion. I feel yeah. like I'm just getting better, better in my technique, better in how I self-assess, better in how I edit songs, better in how I how I approach my art, objectively criticizing myself more, which is something I've always done, but I feel like it's a muscle, so the more I do it, the better I get, yeah. you know? more open to success. I'm in a healthier space mentally, so I feel like I've been able to take on a lot more than I used to before without getting inundated or without getting overwhelmed. I'm working at a much higher level of productivity, which is a beautiful thing because it feels like home. It feels very liquid. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. just same shit, but better. I love that. Mm-hmm. Growth, evolution. Yep. Growing as a person, growing as a woman. All of that. Yeah. What is, as, you, as you're growing, what are you discovering new about yourself? That I have a lot more to learn. <laughs> that I have a lot more to grow. Oh my God. That God will humble you. Every time you feel like you've learned it or, you know, God yeah. will humble you. So it helps to just stay open to new lessons. And, and um, yeah, anytime I've ever felt like I was in a place of higher ground, I could bet money that within the next couple of years I would end up, I would end up sitting on the other side of the table experiencing what what i was judging whether conscious or not yeah so be less be careful because it fucking happens and it's just it it makes it easier to approach when you have hard times or when you're dealing with someone that might seem difficult to have more empathy and more grace because it'll fucking come right back and then god will be like well you don't understand why they feel that way great let me show you you. this is why they're feeling that way (laughs) yeah and then you experience it and you get it so i've learned that i have more growing to do I've learned that I have more capacity for forgiveness than I thought that I did before. Um, oh, I've learned that no matter how much I feel like I'm growing, and no matter how much I want to help people, you can't force someone that's not ready. You know? That's right. And you can feel all gung-ho and happy and enthused, but if someone's just not ready, you just got to let them be and love them from afar to keep your peace. 
And also to honor their journey as well. That's honor. That's also honoring yourself by recognizing that you have to honor their journey, no matter how difficult that is yeah. to do. But it's their process. It's their process. They have to go through it. You know, I I have someone very close to me. Like sometimes I just want to shake and be like, why can't you get it? But you know what? God told me, you know what? You're not honoring his journey. Yeah. You have to let that part go. You want to control his outcome. That's not up to you to control. Let yeah. that go. You have to honor his journey. And when you do that, you're honoring yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not fucking up your peace over someone else. Right. Yeah. And people are just mirror mirror reflections of yourself. So what are you seeing in that person that's triggering something inside of you? And that's a whole nother conversation, girl. We'll be here all day talking about that part yeah, of it. But it's true. But it's true. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. So I've learned all that. I've learned that I had a lot more learning to do. Yeah. And it's it's a process. You'll it's get there because every step wakes up something else inside yeah. of you. And then you get another bo- another another <laughs> problem that you gotta fix. So that's just life. It's just a, it's a forever thing. It's just life. So listen, the book is out now. People can purchase it on Amazon. Um, and where books are sold? Uh, can you give me one of the one of the New York bookstores that count towards the NYT thing? Hold on, I'm gonna give you a specific. Okay. The goal is New York Times bestseller list, and there's a lot of politics involved. Like if certain stores don't sell it, and that's not where it's bought. Brick and mortar. Any, any cool. brick and mortar, uh, mom and pop store. Go ask for it. Go ask for it. Mm-hmm. Go ask for it. And I think you have to sell what ten thousand copies. Nobody. Knows? It's because it because technically you think that it has to do with numbers, but there's politics involved. But the politics are also welcome because it protects the integrity of new authors. Like someone could argue that it would be unfair for me to be able to reach it if it was strictly numbers based because I'm walking in with a demographic that already existed for me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if I was a shit writer, then it would fuck up the integrity of that list because then it would just qualify me, but it wouldn't be a good piece. It would just be people being down to support. Yeah. You know? So I get it. I get why the politics exist. Yeah. But look, go to any moms and pop store, get, get the book. It's called Words of a Goat Princess. And, um... I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go buy it because this is. I'm oh, just yeah. reading through it and I'm just looking at certain <laughs> That's for parts. This is for me. That's for you. Can you sign it? For it's me? signed. Oh, it's signed. Yeah. <laughs> oh my. Oh, it is signed. Look, yeah. it is signed. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> so, uh, you may not know this, the people watching, but I'm an avid reader. Like, oh, lit. I, like I, Sick. I go through probably like. 12 books a year. Like, too. I am, like, a nerd. When I go any downtime, I'm like this. Yeah, me In the too. morning, I wake up at 6 a.m. The first thing I'm doing is in a book. No way. I like the smell of it. I like to go to the library. I like to sit in, like, Barnes & Nobles in the Starbucks area. I'm such a geek when it comes to reading. So, you don't understand. This oh, made my day lit. to have a signed book. I like to smell it. Yeah. I'm such, so geeky and nerdy of that. I well, love. the reason I got into loving books because when I was a kid, that was my way to escape. I used to sit in the corner and I used to read books, but and I would visualize the stories in my head and I would be taken away by books. Mm-hmm. So as I got older, I just developed like this love of reading. I wish I can get my son into it, you know, but well, I, you gotta I, respect I his journey. Books. I gotta respect his <laughs> journey. Right, right. Oh, thank you. Now no I made problem. my day. I got my signed book. All right, everybody, pick up this book. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. And don't Thank forget, you. her new single is available now. You guys can stream it on all streaming platforms featuring Big Sean. It is called Shut Up. Okay? My special guest today. Give it up. Missy Reyes, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank it's you. Tapping with TT on Hot 97.